Hey my friends, I hope you're having a fantastic week. So, we have learned about the first three phases of the, cat of the butterfly's life. The egg, the first phase, the caterpillar, the second, the pupa, the third, or the, also known as the chrysalis stage. And now we are gonna learn about the fourth stage, the adult butterfly. And it's perfect timing too because the um, caterpillars, the butterflies, in our classroom are currently in their chrysalis. And I'll share with, uh, share with you this picture that I took on Tuesday morning. And you can see there they are attached uh, by that, to that silken pad at the roof of that lid that was on the cup that they were in when they were caterpillars. And they're kind of just hanging out there. And now they're inside their net, their sort of butterfly habitat, just waiting to emerge, right? So now let's learn about the fourth stage, the adult butterfly, okay? Let's take a look. So as it changes from an egg to an adult, a butterfly renews itself on several different occasions. When the growing stages are over, all that remains is for the chrysalis to crack open and the adult butterfly to emerge. Within the chrysalis, um, tremendous changes have taken place. And while this happens, a new creature appears to be born. So let's take a look at a closer look at a series of photos that show what happens when an adult butterfly emerges from the chrysalis one step at a time, okay? Let's take a look at that. Stage one, ready to hatch. Hours before emerging, the butterfly is still developing. By now, some of this blue morpho butterfly, that's the butterfly that's inside this chrysalis, it's called a blue morpho. Uh, some of the blue morpho structures can be seen through the skin of the chrysalis. The dark area is the butterfly's wing, and traces of the antenna and legs are visible toward the bottom of the chrysalis. It takes about 85 days after the egg is laid for a blue morpho adult to emerge. Step 2 the first stage. Once the insect has completed its metamorphosis and is ready to emerge, it begins to pump body fluids into its head and thorax. The thorax is like the upper body. This helps to split the chrysalis along certain weak points so that the adult insect can be begin to force its way out with its legs. Step three, head and thorax emerge. Once the skin of the chrysalis is broken, expansion can proceed more rapidly. Inflation is due not only to the body fluids in the head and thorax, but also to the air the insect takes in. Although by now the antenna, head, and palps, which are sensory organs that the butterfly uses to taste food, are visible, the wings are still too soft and crumpled for proper identification. Step four, having pushed its way out of the chrysalis, the butterfly's body now hangs free. At this stage, the butterfly's exoskeleton, so the outside skeleton of all insects, is soft and still capable of more expansion. If for any reason the butterfly is damaged at this stage or confined, perhaps by a thoughtless collector, complete expansion is not possible. All the parts harden and a crippled butterfly results. Step five, steadily growing wings. With the butterfly now out of its pupal skin, the chrysalis, the most important actions are the ejection of stored waste, so it has to go to the bathroom, from the abdomen and the expansion of its wings. As it forces blood from its body into its wings, a butterfly or moth will usually hang head up so that the pull of gravity helps to stretch the crumpled wings. Step six, becoming its full size. By now, the veins in the wings have almost filled with blood and it is possible to see the wings visibly expanding. The expansion must take place fairly rapidly or the wings will dry before they have reached their full size. If this happens, the butterfly may be too crippled to fly. Step seven, waiting to fly. After a period of about 10 to 20 minutes, the wings reach their full size. The butterfly now waits for its wings to harden properly before it attempts to fly. Then, 
After an hour or so, and some preliminary opening and closing of its wings, the butterfly takes to the air. It usually flies straight to a plant or other food source for its first meal. In this picture, friends, you can see an adult blue morpho butterfly from the top. Okay, so that's the same butterfly that we saw just hatch out of the chrysalis. Um, and it, this, it shows uh, how the upper surface, this dazzling blue sheen, contrasts so vividly with the brown spotted underside seen in the pictures below. So that's what that butterfly looks, at, looks like from the top. You can see the blue color on its wings there, and that's where it got its name, the blue morpho. Butterflies and moths are unique among insects in that every part of their body from their wings to their feet is covered by thousands of delicate scales. The most notice noticeable scales are those covering the upper and under surfaces of the wings, as these give the butterfly its color and pattern. The head has two jointed sensory organs called antenna, used for smelling and a specialized coiled feeding tube, feeding tube or proboscis that uncoils when the insect wishes to eat. The butterfly's body is divided into three segments, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The thorax is the powerhouse of the body, with connecting muscles for the two pairs of wings and the three pairs of segmented legs. Most of the insect's digestive system is in its abdomen. Very cool. You might be wondering, do butterflies and moths have any enemies? Yes, hundreds of different kinds of animals eat butterflies and moths. They are special favorites of wasps, bats, birds, frogs, lizards, spiders, and turtles. These animals feed on the butterflies and moths at each stage, egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, or cocoon, and adult. How do butterflies and moths protect themselves? Camouflage is one way. Different butterflies and moths look like green leaves or dead brown leaves, like tree bark, like twigs or grass, even like bird droppings. Predators have a hard time finding them. The wings of the Indian leaf butterfly, for example, look exactly like a dead leaf with torn edges. Mold-like spots on the leaf help hide the butterfly even more. Can you find all of the butterflies and moths in this picture, friends? Take a close look. Which butterflies and moths tend to have bright colors? Those that taste bad or are poisonous. Predators that bite these insects learn that the bright colors and striking patterns mean trouble and those that ignore the warning get an awful tasting mouthful. Some harmless butterflies keep safe by looking like poisonous butterflies. The orange and black monarch butterfly, for example, is poisonous, and the almost identical viceroy butterfly is not. Birds that learn to stay away from poisonous monarchs also avoid the harmless viceroys. How do scales protect butterflies and moths? They help them escape danger. Suppose a butterfly or moth gets stuck in a spider web. As it breaks away, only a few wing scales stick to the web, not the whole wing. The scales pull out as the butterfly or moth flies away safely, only a few scales lighter. Why do some butterflies smell bad? To keep safe. Zebra butterflies are an example. Their bad odor is a tip-off to predators to leave them alone. At night, these butterflies sleep together in big, bad-smelling groups. Interesting. And in this picture, you can see the zebra long-wing butterflies. They're very pretty. How long have butterflies lived on Earth? About 40 million years. That's the age of the oldest butterfly fossils found so far. Moths have been around even longer. The first moths lived around the time of the dinosaurs, some 140 million years ago. By the time of the first humans, about five million years ago, butterflies and moths were much like those we see today. Why are butterflies and moths important? For many reasons. 
Butterflies are very beautiful. They have been here for a long time and are part of our world. Butterflies and moths carry pollen from flower to flower. When the butterflies or moths drink nectar from a flower, some pollen sticks to their bodies. Then as they visit other flowers, the pollen drops off. Many plants need pollen to produce fruit and seeds and start new plants. Lepidoptera are important too because of the huge number of them eaten by other animals. Centipedes, spiders, and many groups of insects prey on them. Frogs, toads, and lizards. Small rodents, bats, and monkeys eat them too. Even people in some countries gulp down caterpillars, fried and crunchy. I don't know about that. Will butterflies and moths live forever on planet Earth? We hope so. In some countries, butterflies are disappearing because people are moving into their habitats. There is much we can do to protect these beautiful creatures. If you have a garden, you can plant flowers to attract butterflies by day and moths by night. Choose plants like thistles, yarrow, and goldenrod that will feed caterpillars and butterflies. Try not to disturb these insects at any stage of their development. In the summer, you'll see caterpillars eating leaves, moths resting in the tree bark, and butterflies sunning themselves on flowers. If everyone helps, butterflies and moths may live forever on planet Earth. And the butterfly in this picture, friends, is called the banana eater. Look at those big eye spots on the wings. All right, that was a lot of information. But before we go, I wanted to share a few more pictures of just some uh, different adult butterflies that I thought were really, really cool looking. So we'll just go through these really quickly. All right, let's take a look. So these first four friends are temperate butterflies, and that means they live in an area that has cold winters and warm summers. So kind of like Washington, where we live. So this first one is called the Adonis Blue. And it's very, very pretty. This one is threatened uh, because their habitat is being destroyed but now they're protected by law in the country of France. So that's good news. This next one is called a marbled white. It can be found in Europe and Asia and has a black and white pattern. This next one is called the large copper. Land drainage has meant the gradual disappearance of this butterfly from the marshy, marshy areas of Central Europe and temperate Asia. Very cool looking. And this one is called the Kama butterfly, or it's also known as the Hop Merchant. It's found in a wide range of woodlands in North America and Europe. It belongs to a group of butterflies called the Angel Wings, in which different species have been named after their distinctive wing markings. And in that bottom picture there, you can see the little white mark on its wing. Kind of looks like the, the comma that we use in our writing. Well, I don't think we've learned about a comma yet, but we will someday. And that's what it looks like. This next group of butterflies are mountain butterflies. So they live at high elevations. The first one is called the Apollo. This one is found in some of the higher mountains of Europe and Asia. Because its many local forms are much sought after by collectors, it is now protected by law in most of Europe. This next one is the, called the Mountain Beauty, or the Bhutan, the Bhutan Glory. Very, very cool looking. It comes from the mountain forest of Thailand and India. In Thailand, many of these butterflies are killed and exported to collectors, probably because they look so unique. And this last mountain butterfly is called the Moorland Clouded Yellow. Very cool color. It's mostly in North America, Europe, and Asia in marshy and mountain areas. Now this next group of butterflies are exotic butterflies and they live in the tropic regions. So very, very warm and rainy and humid. Um, parts of the world. The first one is called the purple spotted swallowtail.
This next one is called the birdwing swallowtails. Some of the most lovely butterflies are the large birdwing swallowtails of the New Guinea region. Species such as this are protected against overselling, but not from the destruction of their habitat. This next one is called the Royal Assyrian Butterfly. Just this beautiful blue and dark colors there. This next one is very interesting. It is called the Mother of Pearl Butterfly. It has a super unique wing shape that I haven't seen on very many other butterflies. And also, it can look different depending on how much rain the, it gets uh, in its habitat. If it's really rainy, the, ring, the wings will get smaller, probably so that it can fly easier. And this next one is called the African Giant. A wingspan of up to 10 inches makes this African Giant Swallowtail the largest African butterfly. The butterfly is believed to be extremely poisonous and is avoided by its enemies in the forest. And this last one that we'll look at, this is the Morpho Cypress. The group of South American butterflies called the Morphos include some of the world's most dazzling butterflies. The wings of species such as the Morpho Cypress are often used for jewelry. And you can see in that pendant there in that picture They've taken the wing and put it inside of a glass case there to make a necklace. It's very interesting. It's a beautiful butterfly. All right, friends, great job. I hope you learned a lot about adult butterflies, and I can't wait for ours to hatch out of their chrysalis. It's going to be very exciting. Keep up the great work. And uh, if you want to watch the other videos about the egg, the caterpillar, and the pupa stage, I'll put those in the description uh, below so that you can check those out if you want, okay? Have an awesome day, and I'll see you again real soon, okay? Bye-bye.